Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Joffrey Noodle Legs here today. I hope you're all doing well. Um, got a top 10 for you today. I'm going through my top 10 favourite emotional horror movies. Now, what I mean by that is that these are horror movies that are can sort of a bit of a can be can be can be a sad ending. Not necessarily, uh, but something that something that can pull on your heartstrings. Um, and something that can make you feel like the attachment to um, maybe the, uh, the the killer or actually the victims or whatever. It's just things that the, these films have a sort of like a bit of an emotional attachment to it. Whereas a lot of horror films, you don't have that. But there are some that do have that sort of attachment to it and you come out of it feeling heart warm sometimes or feeling sad or low or thought provoking you know just makes you think about it for days afterwards thinking oh that's such a shame that happened you know that kind of thing so we're going to be looking at my top 10 of that today some of these would be obvious and some probably not so um so number 10 is a a, a house invasion film called the strangers now this is not such an obvious one i just think it's in the sense of like there's at the beginning, the story tells you of two, uh, a man and a female coming home from some, some sort of party. He's obviously proposed to her uh, to marry, and she said no. Um, so there's already that sort of like little bit of heartache going on there, especially for the guy, because he's broken hearted, obviously, because he's, he's, he wants to marry this woman who's played by Liv Tyler, extremely pretty woman, and she said no. And so that's already sort of pulling on the heartstrings. Anyway, and then he he goes out to to the garage to buy her some cigarettes or whatever. And while he's away, the house gets in, in, um, invaded by these three young teenagers. And then it comes to like a home sort of invasion sort of um, film where he comes home and they're both stalked by these killers. Um and obviously his friend turns up as well to see if he's all right and gets sort of like killed by this, um, gets killed in the process of checking on them. And it's a sort of really suspenseful um, survival horror. And it's like you think these two poor people have already gone through it emotionally with uh, the, the sort of like unsuccessful proposal. And you, you kind of feel, I think, she then sort of starts feeling that life's too short and maybe I should have said yes sort of thing you know because she loves him obviously but she obviously didn't feel ready for it but then sometimes I think this sort of story tells you just go with it sometimes just go with it because sometimes something really shit can happen and you can sort of like think I wish I'd gone with it you know and I think that's where that's sort of like a bit of an emotional sort of time with this film and it, and it can make you come out feeling a bit oh man that's really sad, you know, all the, they've had a wreck of an evening and now they've been gone through this. Horrible. So that's number 10. Number 9, a bit more of an obvious one. It's the um, the film, that the ghost story that I love with Daniel Radcliffe and it's The Woman in Black. This is, again, is a story and um, Kit, Kit here is now like a, he's like a single dad because the wife died. Um, I believe at childbirth, so he's like a single dad, and being a single dad, I can relate to the sort of like any stories, <laughs> not not all those is a horror ghost story. Any stories about that can sort of like really pull on my heartstring anyway, and this does pause on it, um, especially with the, the sort of climatic ending. It's got one of those endings that gives you a real sort of like, was that sad or was it supposed to be or was it happy ending? It could be either way, you, how you look at it. But it does pull on the, that sort of uh, single dad emotional strings on this one. And I really enjoyed that part of the film. The film itself, I mean, that that's a little, little sub-story in the film. And the story itself is obviously about a house that's a family of all died. And there's been some sort of really sad things happening, uh, especially with the child with the, in the family. Um 
that I believe are drowned and stuff like that. So the, that's why the woman in black is haunting this house and stuff. And it's and he's gone there to try and sell it and find the papers. And he, he sort of like sees the ghost and it haunts him and stuff. It's a really creepy, scary film. I will do a review of this. I want to be doing... um. Uh, at the moment, I'm trying to work on doing some week films, like a week of um, my American Horror Project films. And I want to do a week of Hammer films, and I'm sure this one will be in it, because this is a Hammer film. Um, so a really, really cool film, and it does put on you a little bit emotionally as well, just because of the sort of subplot stories. That's number nine. Sticking with the, the sort of dad and son story, at number eight it's another sort of quite depressing one actually but it's really really cool and it's called the road this is a post-apocalyptic sort of film about survival of these father and son and they come across all these sort of horrible sights and stories and gangs and stuff and it's their survival and the father starts to become ill and he's worrying about his son being left alone if he dies and stuff like that. It's a real sort of gripping emotional story. Um, it is a horror film because obviously it's post-apocalyptic and all these horrible things going on around it. So to me, it's a horror film um, because it's a horrible story. Um, and it is a great story and it is a bit of a tearjerker, that film, The Road. So that one is in at number eight. Number seven, maybe not so obvious. Um, and this is The Conjuring 2. Uh, this is the Enfield story, which is based based in Enfield, which was not far from where I used to live, like in Hertfordshire, because Enfield sort of like, it's Hertfordshire and London. Um, it's like on the, on the outskirts. Um, so this is a, a story about this family being haunted by a ghost in this house, and the ghost is like an old man. And it's a story of his sort of like life, and he's not a really such a bad ghost. It's just that he's the story of that sort of like intertwines with them, so that's where you get the scary bit. But his story is quite sad, so you you start stop feeling for the ghost really a little bit. So it's a bit of a different one of a sort of like an emotional horror film, and you do feel for the family because it's a young family. It's like a single mum with um, three or four kids, and it's like um she's trying to deal with that and cope with that so she calls in our conjuring detectives to help her out and stuff because no one believes her um that the kids are being haunted by this ghost and it's got lots of jump scares and it. it is a scary film uh, but it's really really cool and the story the emotional bit of the film is the ghost story um and, and it's really really cool and i love that sort of that sort of um different sort of take on it um and I love that. So that's really, really cool. That's The Conjuring. And that was it. Was that number seven? Number seven. Number six. This could be a bit of an obvious one, I suppose. And it's a quiet place. This is about a, a family survival in like this. Um, the, the, the planets have been taken over by these creatures that have kind of got really bad eyesight and they rely on sound. So you can't make a noise. They, if you talk, they'll hear you. They will kill you. And it's like that. And... The young boy of the family gets killed really early on in the film. And it's really, really sad. And one of the girls is deaf and can't hear. And there's all sorts of things going on. The mother's pregnant. She's trying not to make a noise. And this poor family are trying to survive these creatures. And you feel so attached to them. And and the, the, the father then sort of makes the ultimate sacrifice to save his family at the end. And that, again, it's another sort of like emotional sort of like ride. And the whole film is a bit of a ride like that. I mean, they've had to suffer the loss of the boy as well as trying to live in this sort of circumstances. Um, a bit like um, The Last of Us um, game, video game, where it's a, it's a father and a daughter. Well, the daughter gets killed. It's the father and the, the young girl um, trying to survive these creatures called clickers that can hear noises. It's the same sort of thing as this. It's really, really cool, really good, really well acted, great film in number six, Quiet Place. Number five is one of my favourites, and, and, it, and it pulls on me all the time, just because it's a, it's a sort of subject that I hate, because it's one of the things that I hate most in the world, and that's bullying. And number five is Carrie. 
And so this is all based about a, a young, beautiful girl at school, high school, being bullied by all the other girls because she's a little bit different to the other girls. She's quiet, she's withdrawn, um, and she, she's sort of like got, um, I don't think she's got learning difficulties, but she's she's just got a little bit slower than the other kids. So they all pick on that and give her a real hard time. But what they don't understand is that Carrie's also got psychic abilities and she's got some psychic powers, um, which unfolds throughout the films as she sort of gets her revenge on the, these kids that are horrible to her. And then she pays the ultimate price at the end sort of thing. Um, this is another film I think I need to review on my channel. I think it'd be really cool to look at Carrie. Um, it's such a good, so I might do a week of 80s classics and this will probably go in there. Because um, it does need to be looked at. I don't see many reviews of it on, uh, on anywhere. So I'm going to maybe look at this one. So that's in at number five. That's the amazing film Carrie. With the amazing Sissy Spacek. So top four. Top four is probably one of the most obvious ones. Um, and I, I talked about this in my... Um, I think I did this in films with... Uh, psychological sort of films i think I, I put it in and it was the sixth sense again this sort of can pull on your heartstrings because of like the poor lads going through all this sort of like trauma and you can see these dead people no one can believe him and his mother who's really lovely but she believes he's making all this up and you know he's just trying to stress her out when the fact is he's not but then he gets his child psychologist to talk, help him get through this and then the story turns around onto the psychologist and then you start feeling sorry for the psychologist and then it turns back to the boy and you start feeling sorry for the boy and his mother it's a real sort of pulls on your heartstring film from both sides of the story by both of the main characters have got their own story to tell and they both pull on your heartstrings so it's one of those really clever horror films so that's number four the sixth sense Number three, my favourite vampire film, and you know, the Swedish film, Let the Right One In. This is another one that can pull on your heartstrings, because it's two lost souls. One, a vampire, who's been a lost soul for I don't know how long, could be years, hundreds of years. And a young lad who's a bullied, again, a subject I hate, and is lost with no sort of friends. And he befriends this vampire. And they sort of build and bond a relationship built on trust friendship and love and it's a real heartwarming terrifying horror movie and it's fantastic it's one of the greatest films ever made there is a review of this on my channel uh let the right one in it's brilliant amazing film number three let the right one in number two is a courtroom drama that can sort of pull on your heartstrings a little bit because you feel sorry again for um the victims of this and it's the exorcism of Emily Rose and uh, you feel sorry for Emily because she's possessed you know not out of choice by this demonic uh, possession and she cannot get rid of it. it it sort of like curses her and causes her to do demonic behavior and then you also feel sorry and, and pulls on your heartstrings for the priest in the film uh, who tries her utmost best to help her but ends up uh, ends up causing her to have a demise but not his fault you know he hasn't done it deliberately he's, he's done everything he possibly can to help poor Emily um, get rid of this demonic by performing an exorcism which doesn't go to plan and it goes through the courtroom drama of it because he's up for murder when the fact is, all he did was try and save her. And so you've got that ride, emotional ride of, of again, Emily and the Priest. Fantastic film. The Exorcism of Emily Rose, number two. So number one has to be the classic, which I've not really talked about on this uh, channel. Um, I've been thinking, that I've got this on Blu-ray. I've been thinking about picking it up on 4K because I do really like the film. It's a Stephen King film. <laughs> and I'm not a big Stephen King fan. I was saying that. I love the film. His, the film adaptations of his books are fantastic. 
I just don't like his books. I just don't like them. I find them too long-winded. But the film versions are amazing. I've got loads. The Shining, Christine and all that are fantastic. But this emotional one has to be The Green Mile with Tom Hanks. This is number one. It's such an emotional film because, again, it's um, the killer wrongfully, wrongfully accused. He's not the killer. He tried to help. But because he was at the wrong place at the wrong time and being having some sort of um, sort of learning difficulties or uneducated difficulties, I think they tried to play on, that he could not communicate well enough to show that he was not the killer, he was there to help. And because he was in such a state, because he couldn't help, they believed him to be the killer, and he ends up on death row. And this whole film is based on death row. And you see some executions by electric chair, and death row is being run by Tom Hanks. Woody. <laughs> so, uh, and the whole sort of, um, all the prison guards all start feeling for this prisoner who they know has not done nothing wrong. He helps him out because he's got this ability to help people with illnesses and afflictions to help them. He's been given this gift to sort of like help them and take it from them, and then he can sort of spray that out and it goes away. Um, like Tom Hanks has an infection and he helps him gets rid of that. There's a mouse that gets killed. He, he brings the mouse back to life. There's a woman with cancer and he helps her. And it, all sorts of things. And they all know he's not guilty of this crime that happened with this murder of these two girls. And But he still goes to death row for that crime. And they all get emotionally attached to um, the prisoner. And so do you. It's one of those sort of films and you come out feeling... That was really powerful. That was really upsetting. It was very heartwarming and it was heartbreaking all at the same time. So that, to me, is the number one emotional horror movie. And that's The Green Mile. What do you think of those guys? What are your sort of emotional sort of uh, horror movies? Let me know down below. Uh, I'm not talking about any sort of movie because there's loads, isn't there? Elephant Man, etc. I'm talking about films that are horror based let me know down below or you can recommend any good ones um because i do like them it's not a genre i go to very often um because i, I don't want to be have my heartstrings pulled too much there's enough of that in the world already in my life already so i like my horror to be a little bit of escapism but now and again if the film's amazing and it's and it's really grips you then that's really cool